Hello, welcome back. I hope that you're doing okay. Exciting times today because we can finally bring you a kitchen renovation, house renovation, before and after video. We've been bringing you lots of before videos and lots of during videos, but we've finally got something to show, the fruits of our labour. If you're new here, we've been extending and renovating our three bedroom semi-detached house, which is just outside of London. For a few years now, we've been doing a lot of the work ourselves under the watchful eye of my dad, who's also been doing a lot of the work himself as well. And we've been getting trades in here and there to help out with the bits that we've uh, not been able to do or we've just been too tired to do at some points but we're finally there brilliant exciting times i'm going to show you inside in just a moment i will link down below any of the videos that i've made that show more about the individual elements that we've done um, i'll try and give you as much general information as possible that will be useful if you two are planning or in the midst of a renovation and extension but if you want any more specific information about anything please do just ask just pop your comments in the uh, box down below and I will try and visit any of those um, issues that you've got. I've got lots more additional videos to come in the future looking at individual elements of the build and the kitchen as well. But let's go. Now, this story starts in the hallway for a reason, because when we first bought the house about 10 years ago, it had a reasonable sized hallway, but quite a small kitchen. So we decided until we were ready to do the extension that we would extend the kitchen into the hallway. So we kind of stole a bit of the hallway and that gave us room to have a seating area in the kitchen as well. When we came to doing the extension, it would have been a disproportionately small hallway for the size of the house. So we actually moved the wall back. So we put the stud wall back here. Um, it went a little bit further, added a door. Now we've got a reasonable sized hallway. We are going to add a porch in the near future. So that's going to be more of the focus for our shoes and our coats to be stored out there. It's really nice to be able to keep your shoes out of the house if you can. Um, but this is just a bit of general getting about space. We've got this unit here, which is something that I upcycled. I just picked up that up from the recycling centre just before lockdown. Just painted it and uh, sprayed these actually. And so that was a really quick job to do, but that's just brightened it up in here and given us somewhere to store all those little bits and pieces like hats. It's really handy to have that there. On top of it, I do have a gong. Don't know if it's a bit of a midlife crisis, but this was a birthday present recently. It's really good fun. My parents, when I was growing up, had a bell and they used to ring that when it was dinner time. So we bang the gong instead. And uh, we've also got some codes where like three, three, um, Knox means great time and we're doing homeschooling and things so it's a bit of fun the kids like it as well uh we've also added a mirror in here now i'm going to link the company that got this one down below but they've got an amazing range of mirrors i could fill my house with their mirrors but i liked this one for the hallway it's kind of got a bit of an industrial vibe which we've got going on throughout the rest of the house now as well and it just obviously a mirror always makes the space feel a bit bigger so yeah we really like that let's go in the kitchen Here we are. Now, there's quite a lot of different components of this kitchen, so I'm gonna break it down just to make it easier to understand. Where I'm standing at the moment is actually the original kitchen. So literally here was the sink. Um, that was the window out onto the garden. And then we had a wall running down here and a side annex. When it came to designing the layout of the kitchen, uh, one of the most challenging things was deciding and working out what to do with this space here. So this is the original kitchen space. And because we're in an ex-council house, there's actually quite a few houses around our area that have got exactly the same footprint. And they've had extensions as well. Now, we didn't use an architect. A lot of people did. It's quite interesting looking at what different architects came up with. But on the whole, what I've seen unanimously throughout all of the designs is this became dead space. So people put all of their kind of effort and focus into the, the extension space at the back. Some people went the whole way across, which we didn't want to do. Um, but they've generally done nothing with this space, really other than maybe a little toilet or a little bit of utility. We wanted to incorporate this within the kitchen. Um, came up with various configurations. At one point we considered actually putting our kitchen itself over here and the island, but it all became quite an awkward space. And we really like the fact that we've got that nice flow the whole way through. So you can come through from the front door nice and easily out to the bifold doors and in the garden. And that was definitely the right thing to do. We're really, really happy with that. The flooring, from that point of view, is just worth mentioning now because we've gone for this Cardine flooring and we haven't had, we haven't got any thresholds. So here where the door shuts, you could have, with other, some types of floors, you could have a threshold and change the floor or stop the floor. But it's continuous the whole way through and I think that just makes it feel and flow a lot nicer. This is Cardine flooring. My dad helped my Stephen, partner Stephen, 
um, to fit this initially and Stephen actually managed to finish fitting it by himself so he's not a builder he's pretty handy um, but this flooring is designed so that you can fit it even if you're not a kind of professional flora so we've been really pleased with this we ended up going for a darker color than we originally planned and I'm so glad that we did because you can actually get away with not mopping it every day um, and when you do come around to mopping it you realize how dirty it is but it, it disguises the dirt so if you've had a little busy week and you haven't had time to mop the floor it's quite nice that you can get away with it back to this space here as you can see we've got the fridge and the freezer here i've done a separate video about these because although this looks like it's a fridge freezer unit it is actually a separate fridge and freezer we felt like that was the best use of the space it's huge we've got room for so much stuff in here as you can see um this fits perfectly in this little slot here that we were left with and then we just have this extra space here and this has been so handy because it's just, we've ended up using it for all those extra things that you kind of forget that you need a space for. So we've got a first aid cupboard, we've got some stationery, we've got some gardening stuff, we've got some of the bigger appliances that we don't necessarily use every day, so we don't want to take up room in the main kitchen bit for them, but we want to have them to hand. They've all gone in there. That's been amazing. Also, the microwave and the toaster, because they can end up taking up quite a lot of space on your main kitchen bit and you don't necessarily use them all day long. So it's nice being able to just tuck those away here as well. If you come around here, I'll just show you to complete the picture. This is where you would have gone out into the side annex previously. This now goes out into the Amazon delivery room, otherwise known as the utility room. Um, we've got a few boxes in here, there we go. Um, so this is not the biggest utility room in the world. As you can see, we need to have a bit of a rationalise of what we've got in here, but we haven't kind of got round to completing this. It gives us enough space to do what we want to do though. We've got a washer, a machine and a dryer. And then we've got the downstairs toilet, which we haven't quite finished either. Um, just tucked in here. This is actually not a bad size either. And we're gonna try and put a bigger basin, more of a sink kind of basin in here because we didn't manage to incorporate one in the utility room. But this is basically all where the side annex was before. We've also added, because we weren't allowed to go out to the border on two stories, we've added an alleyway down the side, which is actually really handy. Oh, and the little bonus that I'll show you as well is our, sorry, this needs a bit of attention as well, but we've got a larder. So this is the space under the stairs. So come round to the kitchen. Um, this is where we decided to tuck all of our kind of functional kitchen bits away in the end, because that, as I said before, gave us that walkway. It's really nice. We like the way this layout is working. Um, it's a little bit more compact than some people's kitchens might be and I'll explain why in a minute. We've got the peninsula, so we preferred this to an island because with an island people tend to run around it. We've got two boys, they tend to run around everything and anything and I just felt safety wise it was quite nice to have your cooking area just kind of tucked away. On that note though, one thing I would say is that we have got a 90 centimetre gap between these two units here. The minimum that you'd want to go for is about 80 centimetres but even 90 centimetres is a little bit tight. Um, it's fine, we can completely live with it, we wouldn't change it because it impacts the rest of the room for us but when you're doing things like unloading the dishwasher it can get, as you can see, it can get a bit tight if someone else is trying to get past so there have been a few squeezy moments um, but it's something to bear in mind if you're in the process of doing your own design yourself. The units, the drawers, all of that's from Ikea, which meant that we could build it ourselves. So we'd had a fair bit of experience building Ikea furniture, and it's pretty much the same gig, really. There's a few more bits that's worth knowing, but I'll link the video where I talk about that down below as well. Um, but what's really nice is that we could now, we've gone for these green, which is very fashionable at the moment, but we like green as well, but we could actually just change these doors up and give the kitchen a fresh look in the future quite cheaply and quite easily, which is quite nice. This didn't come from Ikea, this is a solid laminate worktop and we got this from Worktop Express. They sent us all the pieces cut to size, so we just had to literally glue them on, so that was really super simple as well. They also cut the sinkhole for us, so we were able to put the sink in and we were able to reuse our old sink because although we've had it about eight years, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, so that was a good recycling tick in the recycling box. Appliances, I've touched on before, this is our oven. We went for the... Um, induction hob in the end we weren't sure but we are happy with that it's working out quite well the actual oven is brilliant but it's really complicated still getting my head around that when i fully have i will put a video with some more information about it and a bit of a review um 
it's a world away from our original oven. It just cooks, even kind of like fish in the oven at freezer, just cooks them to perfection. It's really, really nice. Also, it's self-cleaning, which is a massive bonus. So you just stick it on a certain setting and it cleans itself. So you don't have to use all the horrible chemicals um, or get in there scrubbing yourself. So that's good. In terms of what we actually chose for the kitchen, we've gone for a lot of drawers. So what have we got? One, two, three, four sets of drawers altogether. In our original kitchen, we only had one set of drawers, but the drawers work really well. We've even got pans and things in them. Um, initially, they're quite tight getting your fingers on here. I kept, my fingers kept slipping off, but you get used to it like anything. Um, so that's a feature that we love. Obviously, they cost a bit more than cupboards. And then we've got cupboard under the sink and a couple of cupboards over there. Cupboards up here as well. I know that shelving is very fashionable now. We thought about having a scaffold board shelf and it would all look lovely. But ultimately, next to a cooker, everything would get filthy. We wouldn't have as much storage space. So practicality won there for us in the end. And it still looks chic and nice. Um, but I do see pictures of the uh, the scaffold board kitchen and think they look lovely, but um, you can't have it all. Let's move on into the rest of the kitchen. Uh, now, we've got this little bit at the end. I made a video about this, but we this was our own kind of design where we added this wall unit in. So we could put a few books in there. And it meant that we were then able to build the back of this unit. That was really tricky working out how to do that. Um, that's where not being a kitchen builder or having any experience of it made it more of a challenge. But we got there. We've just got to finish it off now. We need some strips to do that with. But the size is perfect. We love having this bit on the end that we can prepare food on. That's really nice. Try and keep this as clear as possible. And then we move on to our dining table. So obviously kitchen diner. It was important to have this here. Um, it works well having the table next to this unit because you can serve food up and pass things over. You can actually even grab yourself a glass of water um, while you're eating if you want. So we really like this. This also doubles up as a workspace at the moment. So we've got our sockets behind us. We've got a USB charger point. We've even got a network point there as well. So you can set, up, set yourself up here nicely to work as well. It's a really nice view. It's a really nice light, bright room. The table itself is actually my parents' old table that they were getting rid of. We're going to sand it and stain it so it just fits in a bit better colour-wise. Um, my dad picked it up from somewhere, I think in Crystal Palace, and he said it was about £100, but you can get very similar versions online and in the high street shops for a lot more money than that. Um, but we really like it. The chairs are from... TK Maxx, we randomly picked these up on a rainy day trip there and uh, my partner's got a truck so we were able to pick them up and take them away there and then. Um, they're really nice, actually for some reason the kids keep falling off them and also we put these things on the end <laughs> to stop them from, oops, to stop them from scratching the floors which is a nice thing to do but I think that's then made them really slippy so the, they seem to tumble over so we, we'll have to see what we're going to do about that, I don't know. So, come over to our leisure space. Um, this was a bit of a contentious thing, actually, having some seats in here, because when we were designing the kitchen, everyone kept trying to persuade me to push the island and the peninsula out and take more space for the dining, but I insisted on having somewhere to sit. Um, we thought about having built-in seating here in the end, but we spent so much time in Ikea while we were buying our Ikea units that one day when we were in there, we just saw these. So this is two... There's one here and one there. They're two kind of industrial sofas and they're designed so you can have them anywhere in the room. So the backs of them have actually got shelves on them. They've got this kind of quite industrial look, you can see there. Um, they worked out best in this room actually, just going along the back, but it looks like one continuous seat. Uh, we've put some blankets on there for now, but I have ordered some covers online. But it's really nice because it gives you loads of um, space to sit in the kitchen. So we have ended up just hanging out in here a lot, chatting, we like cooking, but we like chatting and playing games and all those other things as well. And it's meant that this has become a really social space. There's enough room for everyone. You can be sitting at the table, you can be sitting down here. Um, it's really good. We've got the TV there. It's always difficult to know where to put the TV, I think. Um, we went for that in the end because it wouldn't have really worked in front of the window. And this means that you can, it's on this bracket on the wall, so you can basically pull it out and angle it in different directions depending on what you're doing. So the kids do tend to sit down there and watch it sometimes, or if we're cooking, we can angle it over there, or we can even watch it from the table as well. So it does work. Um, it is quite big, but hey, there we go. Big TV is the way forward these days, I think. Um, 
Also over here, we've got this little system, which is quite handy. Uh, this is controlled by Google. You can get it to do anything. So this controls our central heating, but also you can ask it anything. Uh, the kids like to ask general knowledge questions and things when they're doing their homework. Um, also, you can set timers on it. So, hey Google, set a timer for 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes. And that's starting now. So I actually tend to do that rather than use the controls on the oven because that's modern life, isn't it? It feels much easier just to shout at Google and command Google politely to do something than to start fiddling around with buttons. So that's quite quickly just become part of our lives. It's funny when people are around who don't have those kind of systems because it's weird when you start shouting at something that isn't a person or speaking loudly to something that isn't a person. But we like that. Hey Google, cancel timer. Okay, cancelled. The kids did set a few times initially at random times of day, so in the middle of the night they'd start going off and we'd have to get up and come down and turn them off, so beware of that if you have mischievous children. The tomato plants are a bit of an addition that we never planned, but because this is south-facing, they've been growing really well in here and it's been quite good fun. Um, in the future, hopefully, we're going to get some kind of mini um, greenhouse outside so we can clear those off there because they're good, but they're not that aesthetically pleasing. We've got this as well. This is our Venus flytrap, which has been very hungry, as you can see. Um, it's got some dinner in there. Uh, it works really well, actually. It seems to keep the area clear of flies. Um, obviously, with any big windows, you get quite a lot of flies. So, yeah, we like that. The kids like it. It's really cool watching them close their little carnivorous traps. Um, so, at some point, we'll style that window set up a little bit more, but at the moment, it's become quite a functional space, really. The picture here is our attempt with these plants here to blend the outdoors and in. It's all about your outdoor indoor space. Um, we've got nice woodland behind us, quite a green garden, quite a few trees in view. And I think it does work actually, it's nice. Um, it's, it ties in with the kind of green theme and the colour scheme we've got going on overall. So we're really happy with that. Brings you around to the bifold doors. So these are our bifold doors and this is actually what this room is all about really, is having that outdoor indoor space. So we've got the composite decking out there which I've spoken about before. We are delighted with that. We haven't even had to really clean it this year. Not much maintenance. It's brilliant. We put it down last year. We spent a lot of time last year finishing the garden and the decking before we finished the kitchen so that when we finished the kitchen it was that ta-da moment which now it is. We can really enjoy this whole space. But this is really like another room in the summer so it's amazing. Went through a stage where we were thinking about sliding doors. With a space this size and an opening this size, I'm so glad that we didn't. I'm so glad that we've got the full opening in the bifold doors because we've had them open so much and it is it just transforms it and it is a really enjoyable, lovely space. Um, these aren't the most expensive bifold doors in the world. They're from AL UK. Um, they've been fine though, they're really they're functioning fine. We've had them open and shut a lot, they're easy to open and shut. We did have some issues with where they were installed, which was more to do with the window company. We had to rectify that, that was quite a big job, but I'm really glad we got it right because we now have that level access, which means that your decking is the same height as your um, floor in your kitchen, so as you step out, there's no step down or up, and that is really, really nice to have. So quite simple to open, just pop this back here. And you just press in. And actually, this is another point. I know people that don't have these doors on their bifold doors regret it. It's nice to be able to, when the weather's not so great and you don't want to have it completely open, you can still get in and out of here and just have this door open. So I would definitely recommend having that as an option if you can. Um, you then just pop this in, turn it, and then push it out. Obviously, you have to work out that you've then got, depending on the design, but with this design, you've then got the doors stacked up here. So you have to work out where that's going to sit best on your um, decking or your patio. Now, who knows if we've got the best option. We've got our steps down there. It is tricky configuring it all. We seem to have developed a vegetable garden and herb garden here that's become quite big. We've got quite a lot of plants going on. I'm going to cover the whole decking area another day in another video, but just to give you an idea of the whole space as one. It is lovely. South facing, we get the sun here around about till just after lunch. Actually, in the really hot weather, it's been really nice to have an outdoor area that's cool. Um, and we've been able to enjoy the sunshine in here in the morning as well. Um, we've had 
barbecues, um, we've put the table here, we've spread all the chairs around. It's a really good entertaining space, obviously we've not been able to do much of that recently. Um, but it is how we envisaged it and we really enjoy it. So, that's it I think, a hell of a lot of information in there. Please feel free to ask any questions if you have any about any of it. Just to say that we are really delighted with our space, it has taken us a long time. But we feel really, without wanting to sound too cheesy, we feel quite connected with it because we didn't use an architect and we did make every single decision ourselves. Um, we've obviously had a huge amount of help, so we have had tradespeople in for the jobs that we didn't want to do. That includes, recently we had someone come in and they did the skirting boards and the Alcatraz. Now that was something that we could have done ourselves, but we just felt like it would have taken us ages. We just wanted to get the kitchen finished and we knew that a professional would do a good job and it's that kind of finishing detail where we want it to look really nice. I have to also mention my dad, who's been the hero of this story really, because he has done so much to help us get it to this stage. And as well as doing a lot of the hard work, he insisted on doing things in a certain way, like a lot of work that just goes completely unseen, but he made sure that all the pipes were hidden so we had a really streamlined space to work with when we were designing the kitchen. He made everything as easy as possible for us to then do the bits that we wanted to do ourselves. He also was incredible in that he just galvanised us into doing the project in the first place because when we started we were at a point where we didn't have a massive budget for it. We were really busy with young kids and with work and health issues as well. It was not a time in our life where we massively felt like we had the capacity to take this on but he, he encouraged us and inspired us to do it and got us going, put that first spade in the ground and um, we, wouldn't, we genuinely wouldn't be here now in this space if it wasn't for him doing that. I'm so grateful that we are because now we're enjoying the fruits of the, of the labour, of everyone's labour and it's amazing and it didn't cost the earth. Of course it did cost quite a bit because these projects always do but when you, when you divide that cost over several years obviously it becomes a lot more palatable as well. But that's it for today. Lots more renovation videos coming soon because we've still got the basement to do, other bits to do, other bits to finish, garden projects, the porch, and so on and so on. So stick around, subscribe, come back. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, but that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. One thing to add, I'm trying to incorporate all of the products in my Amazon shop front that I've now got, just to make it a really easy place to find the products that we've used. And I'm adding little notes as to why we chose the products that we did use. Hopefully it'll make you it easier for you if you're undertaking something similar yourself. But I'm out of puff now, that's it, done with today. Bye bye for now, see you very soon, take care.